Quo. Uh, new batteries in it. I just want to make sure you got them. There you go. Hello, town council. Um, I hope you had a chance to watch the video that I emailed you with the lieutenant governor. Um, even though you haven't accepted my resolutions or gave them a chance for public opinion on it. Um, that's where it comes back to where I came to you in 2011 with the Milton Bird. It wasn't just because of medical cannabis. It was because of how you were treated after you were charged with it, even if you were using it. And it is oppression. You're, a person is being oppressed now. When I showed you the different elements of what happens to people once they're labeled, of how you can't vo vote, how you can't go into jobs and such, oh, and it's very disheartening to know that you aren't even going to give the public a chance or think that it's your issue about citizens being oppressed. Um, and what I just want to re read from the article in the Times News back in 2011, where it states, Todd Stimson talked about the consequences of using marijuana medically when it's illegal. And that's what I was in here for. And it says, the main reason for my usage is that in 1988, January, the year that I was supposed to be graduating, I lost my girlfriend to a car wreck in Florida. She's buried right here in Patty Chapel Cemetery right here in Fletcher. So that's my choice of staying in Fletcher, one of my main reasons. And I've grown up in Fletcher. And then that same year, in May, two weeks before I graduate, my brother got into a car wreck from drinking and driving. And that put him in a coma for two months. And I ended up losing him to alcohol. He took his own life in 1995. So those are my opinions and my choices of why I use cannabis for myself or for other reasons and why other people should. Um, and one of the main things now, oh, which the positive thing that came out was how people had a concern about what's the difference between violent and nonviolent offenders. And I hope you read the email because I did research when I went home that night and found in the statute that there is already a defined definition of people that are violent and nonviolent. And I found out that I'm defined as a nonviolent felon. So I'm proud to stand here and say that I'm a nonviolent felon and that I was charged with something. And when you guys say that it isn't your issue, I agree that it's, it wasn't your issue and it's not your issue, but you guys made it your issue when my house was invaded by the local police department in July of last year by some other people's suggestions that they do that to me. And that's when my children and my family were put in danger, not only by weapons, but most recently we have found out the officer that was supposed to be there to comfort children is now accused of sexually assaulting and exploiting children from the ages 6 to 14. So not only was the local police department putting my children in danger by weapons, they were also putting my daughters in danger with the police officer that was supposed to be there to comfort children. So that's where it's your issue now because you made it your issue to come invade my peaceful home with what you think that is wrong and your moral decisions that is wrong. So you're just going to keep seeing me monthly at every agenda and every meeting until I can get something changed where people can be recognized as regular civilians and have their liberty and justice forever. And I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. frustrating on a lot of people's minds mm -hmm. when you're asked to do something, but there's really nothing you can do. There's nothing I can do for you. I can't change the law. I don't agree with what you did, number one.
That's my opinion. Just like you have yours, I have mine. Mm -hmm. But I'm not going to sit and uh, go through this forever and ever and ever. If you can bring me something on this council that can benefit others in a legal way, in a positive way, then I'll be more than happy to help you in any way I can. However, it's a constant thing the whole way through. And you can continue that all you want to. I just don't think I want to mm -hmm. be a part of it any time for Yep, and will you bring that forward that, okay, I did bring something legal straight to you guys, the CAM program <coughs> and the patents for the cannabinoids. You guys didn't pay attention to that, and you saw what happened to my daughter. To my daughter in front of my own eyes, she sat there in front of me in the hospital, lost her breath, could not breathe, turned flush from her allergic reaction to anti-nauseating medicine, and I even brought you the proof that that medicine had 102 adverse reactions compared to something that has 33. You shouldn't go by your own moral decisions. And then to hear what you said to another person most recently, that you were held down in Vietnam by somebody trying to make you smoke cannabis, and you in turn shot that person the next day. That's that is crazy. friendly fire. And that was what? Well, you understand, then you know what I'm talking about. It's your opinion to go kill people, and that's where I stand here. I don't have the power of force like you guys. You guys have the power of force and the power of unilaterally deciding on things. I have to go by your decisions and everything because I don't have force. All I have is the truth behind me and my words. I don't have weapons. I don't have a gang of thugs. I don't have nothing like that. There was people that invaded my house in July when I was living there peacefully. I wasn't bothering nobody. Nobody. I was helping the society here. Excuse me. I, let me finish my on this. Okay. You have your belief about it, Todd, and I'm going to respect that. At this point, I'm going to respect that. But respect me. Okay? Just have as much respect for me as I have for you. And your friend over there sharing a conversation, he didn't even get it right, okay? You're getting stuff second-handed. And you know what that means down here. Okay? <coughs> You're hearing the other side from me. I told him a story over there where I was proud that I didn't smoke marijuana. And I was proud that I didn't use it and never have used it and was forcibly tried. The force was on the other end. That's what happened, Todd. And this just keeps going on and on. And you're upset at me when I'm just trying to give you the same responses that you give me. And, and I'm trying to be nice about this. Yep, and I've always been nice about it, too. On and on and on anymore. That's what, well, you're your just, I, I have the right to come up here in the public input and put my public <clears throat> input in because I'm a, a citizen of Fletcher. I have the right to come here. I respect you guys, and I respected your peace and your quiet and didn't bother you guys for two years. When you came to my house, put my kids in danger, you have seen me almost every month since then. You made it your issue by disrespecting me and my family and my peaceful homestead. So thank you. My three minutes is up. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Uh-huh. Okay, I sure will. I sure will. And I really appreciate you guys if you took the time to watch that. The lieutenant governor was very understanding, and so were the people, that how we have to assimilate back into society, but once we're labeled and we can't assimilate back into society, it's hard for us. Thank you very much. One of the things you have to realize, Todd, is it's a state law. It is not a political law. Yeah. We don't have the authority... To violate state law? No, you don't have the authority, but you can you can support or ask for change in legislation. But and that's you, not what you submitted. You want you wanted us to adopt that, which would in effect 
be violating state law? Now, if you look at the cannabinoid uh, and CAM program, I was asking for in support of, and the same thing with this, um, the felony disenfranchisement, that was for in support of. I'm not asking you guys to, you, you can't create legislation, you can't. I mean, you can ask about it, but you can't create it. It's the General Assembly that has to do that. But as you can see, things are happening across the country. Our own president has even said that it's less dangerous than alcohol and tobacco. And, and it will change. I mean, it's just a matter of people really being educated about it. And that's what I'm trying to do, and that's what I set out to do. So. And I don't have no hard feelings towards you, Mr. Henderson, at all, and never have and never plan on having hard feelings towards you, sir. And me towards you, but, you know, I, I can't help you with this. That's you know, the point I, we're trying to make is, yeah. is, is if you would spend this effort either working with the people in the state or the state law, but at our level, we're not in a position to do anything for you. It's a matter of just me trying to help out. I mean, it's a matter of trying to get support, and that's where the representative Jones from out on uh, Wilmington, he says it starts at your local level. You have to show the people in the General Assembly that there is people out here in support of the change of legislation. And if you don't have the people or support in the local area, then they don't think that there's any constituents in their area that want to change. And... That's just how it is. I mean, and I'm just going to keep coming in here. I mean, this is my city, and I have a right to at least try and change things in my city. It's not you guys' city. It's not the chief city. It's the public city. And so I have a right to come in and, and at least voice my concerns about what's happening to people. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you.